everyone, I'm Liz from Vitea and I'm here with two of the gorgeous mums from our local area. Rachel, Rachel has two daughters, uh, Margot is three and Rosie is one and a half and Sarah is about to give birth in one week, maybe just under one week, so <laughs> extremely grateful that she's been able to join us. So I just thought it's great to, you know, because you know, I, my youngest is seven years old and for me it was you know, quite a long time ago. Um, since I had and so I've kind of forgotten and, and we thought that we could actually help Sarah with um, or give her you know remind her about what it is about when you actually you have a newborn baby um, so first of all we're talking about packing the bag for the hospital I'm kind of all packed <laughs> exactly. hopefully <laughs> so is there anything that you're packing this time that you didn't pack the first time so this time I have been packing I had a winter baby last time okay um, yes. so this time I've been packing more for the summer baby obviously it's yes quite warm. so it's just little onesies and, and lots of little onesies and things um this time I also have been thinking more about um, the cotton and things like that and, yes. and the muslin wraps and things that we've been using last time yeah I think I just bought whatever was available but yeah. this time I've been looking at the organic things that are going on their skin yes um, and this time I've been a bit more organized and I've got the labor bag for directly after I have the baby and the bag for when I'm actually staying in hospital so um, you know a few more things in the yeah. did, other yeah. than, did you do that yeah. what do I know so what, do, what would you put in the labour bag versus post-baby bag? So um, the labour bag has things like a wrap to put them directly in mm -hmm. um, and clothes that are easier for me to take off because like the skin oh, to skin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because when I had my first child, skin to skin just wasn't exactly recommended or talked about or anything like that. So I've just been a bit more conscious about those sort of okay. things this time. Particularly um, when you're breastfeeding, being able yeah. to like just move your top and not just have... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not just have access to it. Exactly. <laughs> not just have the bra or whatever. Yeah, it's funny yeah. though, because you don't think of that stuff the first time around. Or you don't know that you no. need to think of no. having a mature bra that you can... Absolutely. I think the first time you're more concerned otherwise. about the outfit you take them home yeah. and how cute it is. Yeah, I know. And maybe a hat and then you can think, because let's face it, they just do look gorgeous wrapped up in blankets in their onesies. Absolutely. Like, it's summer. Like, oh, what's the first photo going to be? What are they going to wear? Yeah. <laughs> and then invariably they end up throwing up or something on the outfit yeah. and you have to just wear the little Bond's one, wonder suit or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I know. I know. Everything leaks. But then the hospitals, they provide you with um, nappies now as well. Don't they? So, so the with the nappies yeah. um, and private hospitals do mm. say that you don't mm. need to bring anything at okay. all for the baby. Mm. We have been mm. packed a few things anyway because mm. I am more conscious of what mm. I'm putting. Yeah, definitely. Like with baby wipe, with wash and, yeah. and particularly nappy balm. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, more conscious of using cottons mm. and things like that mm. rather than any of those sort of um, well, exactly. plastic materials. And I think that's it because obviously you've got an older daughter as well who is uh, seven. seven. And, um, you know, since then you hear about all these kids that are suffering from these skin conditions, mm. uh, allergies, and let's face it, everybody just wants to be able to give their baby the best start and give it the yeah. best opportunity. Sometimes it's inevitable and it just happens. Mm. But as we say, prevention is always better than yeah. cure. So if you can start off using, as you said, like natural and organic products and, and particularly with washes and with balms, yeah. but at least you're trying, you know, you're, you're giving a baby the best start and such to, yeah. to avoid any I potential something issues. I really learned with, with Annabelle when yeah. she was a baby was how much it affected what I put on my skin and what she, I put on her skin, how much that actually affected her health and, yeah. oh, and really? everything. Yeah. Well, just yeah. I think how it, she was, felt. it was so fast, any reaction was so quick, so you kind wow. of knew, I mean, they're so, you just, you, I, I didn't realise, so, right, or I underestimated how sensitive baby's skin is, yes. and how sensitive your skin is after you've given birth with hormones, yes. and during pregnancy, and Definitely. everything. Definitely, I know. Um, so it's just something that's more thought about, mm -hmm. and talked about, and easily mm -hmm. accessible mm -hmm. now as well. That I'd say it's probably knowledge. cheaper, like, I, I think when you first yeah, spoke to me, I was like, oh, best for my kids but can't afford it. <laughs> well this is exactly so, what I said before. It's I know. really tricky. I know. And, then, um, and so I knew the importance of it more so with Rosie mm. than with Margot mm. but um, I still thought it was out of reach. Like mm. it just it wasn't mm. I guess a top priority in terms of mm. everything else that you have to spend mm. money on. Mm. And then you look at these products and they're just not 
um, more expensive than anything else that you're going to be buying for. Well, them. that's it. It would be more affordable. Good. It's yeah. much more affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if that's something you prioritise, you can afford it now as well, which yes. is really good. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, know. I mean, that's shift. definitely what I wanted because I had a friend that who's. Um, his daughter was really suffering from really bad eczema and I said to her, you know, have you thought about using any organic or natural products? Mm. This was before I started with the tailor. And she's like, it's just expensive. Yeah. yeah. Where do I start? I think that was my reaction. I know, exactly. Because Rosie and gets it yeah. on, you know, every single crease and it's so bad. I know. So yeah. since we've had your stuff, particularly that, mm. um, the baby balm. Yeah. Um, yeah. and the oil so we've been yes. doing the oils in the, the bath oil anyway wash. the oil yeah. wash and we yeah. still have to medically treat her with cordial yeah. eczema yeah. Um, from time to time yeah. I have to say since using your stuff and mm. that's probably because we're putting mm. it on Mm. Sun cream, it's in mm. summer, so mm. she's had sand. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And the sun sand cream, this salt is really dry. Salt, yeah. Yeah. Everything, yeah. yeah. So it's all, all the things that aggravate mm. her skin. Mm. We've been doing a lot of that over summer. Mm. Um, but using the, particularly, I think that balm, yeah. and the oil wash, yeah. has helped in terms of um, this is the oil how wash. much medication yeah. or like mm. the medicated creams that we have to use. Yes, definitely. We don't use that half as much. And so she'll, she's had a couple of little mm. flare ups, nothing mm. compared to before. Mm. Which is so nice thing. for her because well, it's so it's upsetting. Well, it's I know. Cool. I was really surprised. And I think that's it. Like I, you know, a lot of people would say, "Oh, look, it's genetic." But you know, since doing this, I've you know had to always wash my hands. Yeah, so I was trying out so many different products, mm -hmm. and I've started to get some dermatitis on my hands. Yeah, wow. You know, but from reading about how you treat it, so obviously, what's happened with dermatitis is the top layer of skin has been damaged. So your skin's constantly trying to produce more oils, and, and it's just completely out of balance. So if you can put a balm, um, yeah. particularly with the gentle baby balm, which we'll show you in a minute, so um, it just creates that top layer of skin, so it enables the skin underneath to heal. Oh, my hands yeah. working in hospital. I know, you're yeah. just yeah. touching yeah. on the young yeah. and the oh, oh, exactly. like every five seconds I'm spraying it. alcohol on oh, it and goodness. or washing my hands. Well you should just and use the balm on your hands. Yeah. yeah. I've got naturally dry skin anyway, so yeah. then oh, yeah. gosh. wash it on. So very dry hands. So yeah, the balm, I'd, yeah. I'd love it. Yeah, so I'd do, you know, yeah. give her her little massage yes. after the bath and then. Yes. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and then put it on your hands yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also yeah. with the balm, the potato, it's all sort of well, it's all certified organic. Mm. So therefore, the, uh, the preservatives that are used in the uh, product, they're completely natural, as close to nature as possible, but just enough to stop any bacteria growing, which can happen. But you know, with some some products, they really use harsh ingredients, and that aggravates the skin mm. even further. Yeah. Ironically, yeah. absolutely, which is crazy. Yeah. But people don't realise, and they keep putting it on, and it's da particularly if the skin's already damaged, so if there's already broken skin, yeah. mm. you just have to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And allow the skin to heal and if you're just really quite um, consistent with applying it I mean I found I haven't oh, found anybody right. yet but it hasn't really worked so it's yeah. been I found yeah. that with the body oil just yes. having one product that I can put all over my body as oh, soon as I have a bath and shower yes, yes. Um, oh. it's just it's been amazing, like yeah. my skin and everything especially being pregnant during the summer yes. um, yeah. you know I don't find it I find it soaks in beautifully yes. after a shower or a bath and having that one product that I can put on and I know that it's like fine to go anywhere on my body, it doesn't matter how sensitive my skin is yep. there. Yeah. Um, it's been fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's been well, really, really nice. useful. Exactly. Well obviously what put up was obviously like any any mother that's getting close to giving birth, you've got obviously a little bit concerned about stretch marks and stuff, but it's just keeping the skin nourished. Yeah. And keeping it soft. And there's tamanu oil, which is actually in the pure body oil and also chamomile, but tamanu oil is is renowned for actually um, preventing scars oh, right. or treating any scars. Yeah, so oh. there's just there's a percentage, few percentages of that in the pure body oil, and it's yeah. it's just really gentle. But the Pacific Islanders, as well in Sri Lanka and India, they've been using it for thousands of years to treat wounds, cuts, abrasions, and also nappy rash. Wow! So it was only natural to actually put it in the pure yeah. body oil because it's also as well with the coconut oil. Um, it's absorbed beautifully into the skin. Mm. Yeah, which is really nice. That's nice. It's so natural. I know. Tummy rub. I know. I know. Yeah, really get ready. Up. But even like you said around the rest of your body. Yeah. I put it yeah. literally top to toe. I put it on my face actually. Yeah, put it on my face. Yeah, it's okay. really good. Like once a week, over yeah. under under makeup as a yeah. treatment. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I hate it's embarrassing, but people say, "Oh my god, your skin's looking so good." I'm like. 
Okay, it's a cliche, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I actually do use this product and yeah. it is actually, yeah. I think it literally means exactly like the same, that I've been putting it on my face as well. Just because, yeah. I mean, your skin is so hormonal. Oh, dry. Pregnancy, yes. That one second will be dry and the next second it, it will be not dry at I know, all. I but know. But the oil, and especially I found, like I remember you telling me that the chamomile was in there. It's yes. just so calming on yes. everything. Yes, um, It's nice to stop and just, I don't know. Yeah, stop and pay attention. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I don't have to use. Obviously, going to be looking after the obviously the gorgeous, right. gorgeous so the baby with work and other kids and stuff. If you've got a ritual of okay, yeah. after my shower or whenever, I, yeah. I spend a bit of time. I don't know. Yeah. Doing this, and I found it's really lovely. Yeah, and using the body oil as well, having just one product that the whole family. Yes. Like Annabelle, yes. my older daughter's been using, yeah. and we've been using mm. as well. Having yeah. one product and not having this finicky little cream, anything like that. Oh my god, my um, cream cover is just ridiculous. I, I know. know. Oh my god, <laughs> I think there was one thing when we got married. She was like, I can't handle this. No, you know, like, it's not well, like you have so. one night cream for your eyes and one day cream for your eyes. I know. Eyes. I know. Look, you know. <laughs> coming out which is also really good for the body and the hand cream which again like uh, it's just it's just rich because that's what you need because yeah. I think as you do you know as you get older we're past that stage of oily skin you yeah know, that happens obviously as a teenager and in your 20s and, and you just then after you just need to treat the dry skin and particularly yeah. coming up to winter mm. you know when your skin yes. does to get more exactly. like and your lips get dry yeah. yeah yes so that's when the balm is fantastic yeah and that's really, really, really fantastic actually